Standing on the north side of the Piazza del Popolo in Rome, one of the most famous squares in the city, the Basilica of Santa Maria del Popolo is regarded as one of Rome's greatest stores of artistic treasures, boasting works from the likes of Raphael, Gian Lorenzo Bernini, Caravaggio, Pinturicchio, and many famous others, this Augustinian church is hemmed between Porta del Popolo, the ancient Porta Flaminia, and the Pincio Hill. Though its rather plain facade and relatively small size present a rather diminished physical aspect, don't judge this book by its cover. The Basilica Santa Maria del Popolo has played an extremely vital and active role in the history of Rome for centuries. At the time of this site's birth, Roman citizens were still reeling from the devastating effects of the fall of the empire, with Nero, the tyrannous last emperor of the Julio-Claudian dynasty, still living on in the imagination of the people. In the Middle Ages, a legend arose that a walnut tree growing on the spot where his ashes were buried was haunted by the emperor himself. Ravens roosting in the tree were thought to be demons tormenting him for his hideous crimes. Responding to pleas from the locals, Pope Pascal II had the tree cut down and burned, putting an end to the supernatural events that had terrified the locals. He then had a chapel built on that very site, dedicated to the Virgin, to commemorate the Crusaders' victory at Jerusalem. Ultimately, the chapel was named St. Mary of the People, or Santa Maria del Popolo. And while some sources claim the name del popolo comes from the Latin word populus, meaning poplar, and referring to a tree located nearby, the name is most commonly associated with the phrase of the people, deriving from the chapel's funding by the people of Rome. In 1227, due to the chapel's prominence along the Via Flaminia, as it was situated just inside the north gate of the Aurelian Wall, Pope Gregory IX enlarged the chapel and consecrated it as a church. He brought to it a painting of the Virgin, said to be painted by St. Luke, which still graces the altar today. The church was then given to the Augustinian friars, who still oversee it in 1250. However, by the 15th century, both to impart to the return of the papacy in Rome in 1420 and to the decaying nature of the church and convent, Santa Maria del Popolo was reconstructed by Baccio Pontelli and Andrea Bregno from 1472 to 1477 on the orders of Pope Sixtus IV de Arovere and was given to the congregation of the Lombard Friars in Rome. The Lombard style of architecture present in the church's reconstruction was a direct result of the lead architect Andrea Bregno's involvement with the project, and is important to note as the result of the reconstruction was an early and excellent example of Italian Renaissance architecture, and a strong combination of both the Romanesque and Lombard architectural flavors. Later, from 16th 55 to 1660, the façade, or the front of the church, was modified by Gian Lorenzo Bernini, who was asked by Pope Alexander VII to update the Renaissance church to a more modern Baroque style. While the church doesn't exemplify the theatricality of some of the later Baroque works that characterize the Renaissance, it's important to note that this modification took place during the earlier years of this movement. Climbing up the steps to the main door of the basilica, we will take the most common path through this sacred space beginning at the bottom of the southern aisle, the first aisle to one's right as they enter the church, and continuing up this aisle, across the transept, and then down the northern aisle, all the while stepping into numerous chapels along the way. Divided into 12 chapels of open octagonal shapes, with the interior of a traditional basilica, the architectural layout of the church is that of the early Italian Renaissance style of the late 15th century, complete with rib vaulting, large round arches, wide side aisles, and small windows in the clerestory. The apse, or semicircular recess covered up with a hemispherical vault, usually located, located at the east end of the church, was designed by Bramante, the famous Italian architect, credited with introducing Renaissance architecture to Milan. The oldest stained glass window in Rome can be found here, made by French architect Guillaume de Marchilat. Entering the church, we are met with the nave, and further down, Bernini's Baroque altar, The stucco saints and angels above the arches draw the eye upward, a reminder of the Baroque accents of this time, furthermore displaying the contrast between the architecturally enhanced material and the much simple exterior. However, while the unique simplicity of the basilica's architectural composition is a noted factor when thinking about Santa Maria del Popolo, what the church is most known for is its masterful artwork within the 12 chapels of its interior. 1484, just 11 years removed from the completion of the Basilica's reconstruction, marked the infiltration of the first of the Italian masters, Pinturicchio, as he began to decorate numerous private chapels within the church. 
The first chapel on the right aisle, the Della Rovere Chapel, was acquired by Cardinal Domenico Della Rovere in 1478 to bury his brother, Cardinal Cristofero Della Rovere. Domenico dedicated the chapel to the Virgin Mary, and when he later died 23 years later, was entombed in this chapel along with his brother. The decoration of the chapel is attributed to Pinturicchio, as is the main altarpiece, the exquisite The Adoration of the Child at St. Jerome. Moving on to the adjacent Saibo Chapel, also decorated by the famed Pinturicchio, this chapel was eventually rebuilt by Alderano Saibo between 1682 and 1687 according to the plans of Carlo Fontana, an Italian architect. This chapel is domed, this dome complete with a fresco by Luigi Garzi, the eternal father and glory among angels. This chapel is particularly known for the beauty of its painting, the preciousness of its marble, and the importance of the artists involved in its construction. The next chapel, Basso della Rovere, was acquired by Cardinal Girolamo Basso della Rovere in 1484. He dedicated the chapel to St. Augustine and commissioned Pinturicchio to paint it with frescoes and paint an altarpiece. The acmes of this chapel include the frescoes of the Madonna and Child enthroned with Saints Augustine, Francis, Anthony of Padua, and the Assumption of the Virgin Mary on the first fall. The fourth chapel, the Costa Chapel, first belonged to Cardinal Domenico della Lovere. In 1488, Domenico sold the chapel to a familial ally, Cardinal Jorge da Costa. The most important works of art in this chapel are the paintings of the lunettes by the school of Pinturicchio depicting the four fathers of the church, St. Jerome, St. Ambrose, St. Augustine, and St. Gregory as well as the marble altarpiece by Gian Cristofero Romano. Moving past the Faioli and Chicada chapels on the right-hand side of the transept, as they are both relatively insignificant relative to the artistic value most other chapels in this basilica hold, we move away from the southern aisle and into the transept. Above is the organ balcony and the tomb memorializing a cardinal, and in front is the magnificent altar. Placed at the heart of the church, enshrined over the high altar, we see the venerated Madonna del Popolo. Behind the altar, we've entered the retro choir, named simply because of its position behind the altar. Looking up towards the vault of the original choir bay, rests some of Pinturicchio's most magnificent work. Moving now to the infamous Terrazzi Chapel, up the left aisle of the basilica, this space holds two of Caravaggio's most renowned works the crucifixion of Peter, and the conversion on the way to Damascus. Acquired by Tiberio Cerasi in 1600, he chose two prominent artists of the time, Michelangelo Merisi da Caravaggio and Annibale Caracci, who painted the Assumption of the Virgin Mary to decorate his chapel, inciting a competitive spirit between the two painters to produce their best work, which they certainly did. With his innovative use of chiaroscuro, complete with his new chromatic style, these two paintings helped catapult Caravaggio into stardom, as well as brought a public awareness of the basilica that housed these majestic works. Up the left aisle sits both the Theodoli and Cibo Soderini chapels, the latter of which is known as the Chapel of Crucifixion. With these two spaces, we encounter a juxtaposition of ideals. The first chapel boasts a wide array of marble and stucco, often called Capella Santa Catarina after the marble statue of St. Catherine on the altar, whereas the second was remodeled in the Baroque era, containing mostly frescoes and lunettes. Moving forward, we encounter the Malini Chapel, which was dedicated to St. Nicholas of Tolentino, an Augustinian monk, and was one of the original 15th century hexagonal side chapels of the basilica itself. The second to last chapel we encounter is that of the Gigi Chapel. The powerful banker Agostini Gigi made his fortune in Rome as protege to the Pope, and for his service to the papacy he received this chapel space, later commissioning Raphael to design it. Exemplifying the luxury to which this man was accustomed, the chapel features the much more expensive mosaics rather than frescoes, and boasts surfaces of colored marble. This jewel of Renaissance architecture is most important for its dome, the creation of the world, decorated by Raphael. Other notable aspects of this chapel include the statues of Jonah and Elijah, carved by Lorenzetto, and Bernini's later sculptural editions of Habakkuk and the Angel and Daniel and the Lion. The last chapel of the Basilica is that of the Monte Mirabale. While the twelve incredible chapels located in Santa Maria del Popolo are undoubtedly the most, if not singular, defining qualities of the basilica, it's important not to forget its other crucial aspects. 
including the monuments dedicated to Rome's deceased elite and the stories ascribed to each of these fallen lives. The most important monuments include those dedicated to Maria Eleonora Boncampagni Ludovisi, Giovanni Battista Gisleni, Maria Flaminia Odescalchi Gigi, and Agostino Gigi. Overall, Santa Maria del Popolo stands not only as the beautiful monument to virtuosity and basilica of the people, but also as exemplar of the changing tastes and traditions of Roman culture throughout time. From Lombard to Baroque and Cardinals to Caravaggio, this house of art, culture, history, and religious patrimony served and still serves as a true monument to the muses.